Okay, so I haven't done one of these in a while. Um, it is a deep dive into a product or a bolo or something or a brand and just to see how it is and see how what the comps are and to see what's actually selling. And today's kind of like a different, kind of something out of left field a bit. It is game shows. <laughs> And game shows, by, by game shows or TV shows, I mean like merch. So one of the, the only ways you could actually get merch was actually to appear on the game show, but thanks to obviously like eBay and the internet, you can buy the merch. And some of them go for stupid money. I just can't believe it. Um, yeah, just, just take a look at this. So if you've grown up in the past 50 years, you know what Blue Peter is. Blue Peter is a very long running kids TV show and they had loads of different things on. <laughs> things of the day, they used to make stuff, they used to do like little segments, they used to do travel pieces, they used to do challenges and they used to do competitions. And one of the things that every kid wanted was a Blue Peter badge. Um, <laughs> and there was always that one kid at school and we had one who was like, I got a Blue Peter badge, look. And they had, they marched them up on the front of the, the assembly. It was like, look, I did a picture of the Titanic and here's my badge. You know, that kind of stuff. Um, or I did, <laughs> I did a Thunderbirds Tracy Island and look at my... <laughs> um, yeah, so there's um, everybody wanted one. Plus, I think it actually got you like... Did it get you like 10% or... I think it got you like cheap tickets to like Orton Towers or like certain, certain exhibitions and stuff. I think. Um... But they, over the years, they've come to mean different things. But uh, yeah, so I just thought it'd be really fun to look through stuff. And yeah, I'm going to start with Blue Peter Badgers. This is str ooh, straight away. Stop it. Straight away, I've seen um, Blue Peter Badge. Now, I think this is, it says £205. I think this is the original 1960s badge. Um, the white shield with the blue ship, yes. But it is... See, there's some more there. That's a big collection of them. That's these are the collections. Oh, somebody's shoes, weird. Uh, yeah, this is so, yeah, it's the 60s one that 103. Oh, so that's auction. And this is the 70s one. It's, it's like rib, it's raised. The ship is raised a little bit, but it raised. Now, I think that was that happened all the way up until the 90s. There's another one, 60 pound. Oh, you get a letter. Ooh, 52 quid. That's an auction. 60th anniversary. No. 2017. Lee Peter Sports badge. 50 pound. Yeah, there's another 60s one. A sports badge. 2018 sports badge. Also, oh, these sports badges might be okay. It might be what's to look out for. Because the thing is, everybody wanted these, because it like, they're like, when you get these, it's more on like a competition basis, or like if you do something of merit, and then you write in and you send off like, you what's it, and then yeah. Oh look, there's another sports badge, 2016, the sports badges are quite good. The shield ones, there's a 2020 Tokyo Olympics one, ooh. Rare music pin badge for Ed Sheeran. Ah, did he like guest judge it or something? That's 45, 50. Okay, this green one. Okay, so I remember there used to be different ones for different things. I think this is a 90s one. A 90s or really even noughties one. They used to be different things. So like the green one, I'm sure used to be something like if you've done something like eco-friendly or something like that, or eco-conscious. And then there was a there was a gold one. I remember the gold and silver one. That you had some. That's like a lifelong, like the normal ones. You could usually just get them for um, like competitions or even writing in and stuff. Oh, what's that? How to get a purple fan club badge? Oh, there's a purple fan club badge. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, so I just wanted to like have a look at them because that's one from my childhood that I always remember that everybody used to like want at school. Okay, so one of the hardest ones that I've noticed is pointless, and I think it's, it can actually be quite hard. Um, but uh, when they said like, "Oh, um, 
uh, you get a pointless trophy. I, that's what the light bulb moment so far, Ralph. I'll check these uh, trophies, consolation prizes, and TV merch, TV show merch. Um, and it kind of surprised me. Right? One has gone for £210 at auction. That's crazy. From Series 8, Episode 46. Like, I mean, I know it's only like plasticky perspex glass kind of thing, but like, <laughs> that's weird. It's weird. Who would pay £210 for a pointless trophy? Although, the, I thought there'd be a lot more, considering there's like, they have like five a week and every week, and they've been going, I don't know, they probably do like a hundred episodes a year at least. So, I think this, and it's been going for like, is it 10, over 10 years now? It's like 15 years. So there's like over a thousand of these out there, surely. And there's only like one sold. Interesting, it's interesting. Okay, so the next one to jump into my head was um, the Crystal Maze, because I remember that they used to get like little crystals, I remember them. And uh, yeah, it, when they had to jump in and grab as much money as they can, it's not very good. <laughs> but it is kind of iconic of like the 90s, I think. And there is quite a lot of stuff. There's lots of Crystal Maze stuff. Crystal Maze experience. I don't know if that's like part of the actual game. I think it says I cracked the Crystal Maze. So does that mean that they won? This is a winner's one. Hmm, not sure. But that went for £249. It had the box and everything and the certification. Another one, Crystal Maze bomber jacket. Like these to wear, like, I remember these to wear the, the, those, was it grey bomber jackets? Yeah, here. Like grey bomber jackets. £130. That's amazing. So we're talking about like the old version, the 90s version, not the Richard Iowardi one. Although I do kind of like him actually. Um yeah, so I cracked I cracked the crystal maze again, £90. So the box. Uh, what's this one? Christmas. I built the crystal maze. Ooh, that's a different one as well. So sixty odd pound. So there is like different variations of it. But um yeah, I just found it really interesting, like how strange is that? Okay, the next one is probably a big classic, and it's Countdown. You'd kind of think, like, Countdown would be... Because it's been around for, what is it, since the, the late 70s, early 80s? It's massive, it's massive, like, data. It's like a word and numbers game for during the day, and it's known for having... Like an older generation skew. It was very kind of like my grandparents used to watch it constantly and it's on every single day. And yeah, everybody loved it, like of that um, demographic. And yeah, Carol Vorderman was on it, like Rich, uh, so many different presenters, Rich Wiley. Yeah, so the Countdown, po Countdown Pottery Teapot. Stay with me. <laughs> I found one that went for £200. But then I also found one that went for like, I think it was like £30. But this one, I think is a special one. I think it was one from like the competition, like from the actual like competition that they do. But uh, yeah, <laughs> Countdown Clock Teapot, who knew? £200, I suppose if you've got it in perfect condition or even boxed, that's even better. Um, generation game, good old Brucey. Bruce Forsyth, RIP. Uh, he was a classic game show host in the UK. I'm trying to think of an equivalent in America. Um, I don't know. <laughs> he was just classic. Um, yeah, so this uh, generation game, because they, they didn't they do it in like the 70s and then they brought it back for the 90s, the 80s and 90s. Um, I remember the conveyor belts, the, the famous one. But yeah, this this is just a board game, but apparently contestants used to get this. So this is 1975 one and it's um, 20 pound. So I don't know, I've never seen any generation game stuff out there. But I tell you what I have seen, and that is bullseye stuff. <laughs> so bullseye is a, uh, another game show, it's based on darts and it's big masses bully, the bull. And Jim Berry is <laughs> brilliant in it. But um, Jim Berry used to host it. He was brilliant in it. But uh, yeah, there was a lot of like tacky kind of prizes, stupid prizes. You'd either get something like really good or like, <laughs> you know, like, oh, here's a kettle. <laughs> it's like, okay. 
but they used to have like quite a lot of consolation prizes and one of them was like or a couple of them in fact were like toys you used to get like the bully toy and i think you could buy them in like um they did like a round of, of remakes for shops and stuff but like yeah bull, bully the toy the darts was another one like a pack of darts <laughs> for the journey home <laughs> Yeah, these are the official show darts. So you used to get these, and there's even a bully dart, sh uh, dart shirt. So, so one, usually you get paired up. Contestants got paired up with professional dart players, and I think this is a contestant one, um, but it's a red and white striped one. But yeah, it's, it was always like a classic, I remember that. Another, I wanna go back to like daytime TV because there's so much daytime TV in the UK. And one of the greats is um, Bargain Hunt. Think It's Bargain Hunt. So think what we do as resellers. We go around and we check bargains. We basically do what these people do. So they're teamed with a professional. Sometimes it works out. Usually they're going to like antique shops, which is, there's no bargains in antique shops. And like they try and like haggle. And usually like the antique person's like, oh, I've got this mug for 20 pound. And the contestant's like, Oh, I'll give you 15 and then <laughs> like okay and then the professionals like yes it's worth that you, you'll get you'll get 10 times your money and how much does it go for an auction like five pound it's like it's real and then obviously the people who know you've got fees and everything it's not realistic at all so um yeah the but a bargain hunt like they've got there's a blue team and a red team and they always have like a t-shirt or a fleece depending on the weather and some people have got theirs up. Their fleece is up for 300 pound here. Another person's got one up for like 100 pound by now, depending on the size. This t-shirt, 40 pound. I mean, it is kind of interesting. And it, it's one of those things that you probably find in like, a, on a pound rail or something, because they'll be like, oh, this is, like it's not really worth much. But these, <laughs> for some reason, they are. There's also, I, I see, I remember this. Okay, so this is a bit weird. I remember this, it is called Child's Play, and it's not like the kind of like, you know, Chucky, wanna play, you know that one. It's an actual BBC, um, I think it's BBC or it might be ITV, um, children's show, and it was uh, presented by Michael Aspel. Um, and this one came for 6 99 so obviously not as popular as what people thought. The Critting Factor was like, it was a very thinking person's kind of like game show. Uh, yeah, too too smart for me. Uh, but yeah, they gave out bookmarks apparently, and not very good. Uh, Three ninety nine sell through rate. Okay, this one I've never heard. I've never heard of. This is before my time, and it's um, Razmataz. I think I've heard of it, and it's obviously a music one because this is like a vinyl, like um, storage kind of holder, basically, and that's gone for forty pound. And it is a genuine one as well. It's like a wooden uh, vinyl holder for forty pound. So it's obviously like got some fans out there. But the <laughs> final one I just wanted to like, I just wanted to uh, show is this one. This one's probably one of my favourites. And it's blankety blank. I love blankety blank. I love the Les Dawson one. And I love the Lily Savage one. I even like the Bradley Walsh one now. Um, I watch that every now and then. So this is Les Dawson one, um, but he was like a fan favorite. Everybody loves it. He's like a stand-up comedian. He's done everything. He was, I think, he was the highest-paid comedian in the UK at one point. Uh, but yeah, he did blankety blank, and you get like a checkbook and pen. I think that was it. And it, the checkbooks are really nice. I like they look like silver, but like yeah, they're really fancy. This one went for three hundred pound. Like obviously, people collect them. And it's like memorabilia, and it's weird. I think. If you've got if you've got the collecting bug, like it's hard to kind of like stop. But like some people really like to collect these sort of things and preserve them for like his history, preserve them for bragging rights, preserve them because they genuinely love the TV show. There's loads of different reasons why people want to buy these sort of things. Like I do like the Crystal Maze ones; they're pretty cool. Um, but yeah, they're all all weird. Um, I don't know of any other like TV show like that would give out merch and stuff. The only thing I can think of maybe like, did Noel's house party, did um, uh, Fun House do anything? I can't remember. <laughs> I don't know. Some people give get like goodie, goodie bags and stuff. So 
Anyhow, yeah, I just thought it was really interesting. It's a bit of a silly one, but uh, yes, that is everything. I am going to start doing more of these. I'm going to start publishing more of these. I've got a whole backlog. Uh, but yeah, thank you, everybody. Uh, you know what to do, and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>